Hi boys and girls, here we go then. Let's get cracking with the basic bricklaying tutorials. We're gonna try and keep it dead simple for you, dead easy to follow along because I don't wanna make it too confusing. It's hard enough as it is, especially when you're beginning and you're starting out. Basically, we're gonna work on the fundamentals and building good habits because it's dead important, not just with bricklaying, but any trade and any sport, anything you do in life, you've gotta painstakingly go over the fundamentals slowly, properly, so that you build good habits. It's the same with anything, so that as you practice more and more, you can think less about what you're doing and more about other things and other areas. And that's how you keep building on your skill set and keep progressing and moving and learning. So we'll focus on that. Today we're just going to go over setting your workstation up, your mortar board, your bricks, and where we're gonna put the wall. We'll go over spreading some mortar, not going to go too fast. There's a lot to learn in Brick Lane, I can't stress you. We'll see what we can do with these videos and we'll try our best. All right then folks, without further ado, let's get stuck into the video. We've got our workstation set up now and as you can see, we've got some bricks either side. I've got our mortar board set up in the middle, our spot board. We've got our cement, sand and cement on top. I'll go more into mixes later on in the videos, there's loads of different ones. Yeah, I will show you how to do a lime mortar mix, which is a mix you can reuse when you're practicing. And as you can see here, basically you've got to keep your bricks in line with your mortar board. Anything past here, you're creating a trip hazard because you're walking up and down. This is like your walkway. You don't want to be doing that. And when you're stacking your bricks also, you want to alternate them, you see, and bond them over each other. Like so, okay? Just like that. So they go like that, and then they bond over that. Your walking space between your wall and your materials should be about two foot or 600 mil. That's about 600 mil here. We've already got a previous line here, but we'll just go off that. So just as an example, that's where we'd build our wall. All right, now we've sorted the prep work. Now we're gonna go over, we're gonna spread a bed actually. So what we'll do is we'll spread it along this board because you should practice on your board before. Or the other way you can do it is you can get you can get a block or a couple of blocks and practice on that. So, first of all, we need to know how to hold the treble. So basically, your index finger, your knuckle, the joint on your knuckle, that wants to go right underneath the handle finger guard here. Okay, so there. All right, and then that wraps around and then just rest in your fingers like that. And that's like a neutral grip. There is a few grips, we'll, we'll find them out as we go along we might name them. But that's, that's your neutral grip. So that's the what you're gonna use mostly. A bit like a golf grip, actually. Honestly, it is, I think. That's why you'd use a golf grip. Underneath there, and then they just wrap along that, so you've nice and relaxed. Look, and that's my brick lane grip. Same thing, look, golf grip, brick lane grip. <laughs> that's what you wanna be looking at. Nice and comfortable. All right, so you don't want it too far back. Right, because that's going to put stress on your wrist. You want it close to the, this is what you call a shank on a treble. <laughs> Funnily enough, it's a bad shot in golf, that. Next, we're going to take some mortar. For now, while you're practicing, I would definitely advise you to practice all your stuff on your mortar board, because you'll make a real mess if you start practicing straight away on bricks and blocks, and all the floor will get full of mortar. So when you're practicing, just start off on your board. It can get quite messy. Right, let's have a go. So there's a couple of ways you can take the mortar off the board onto your treble. Um, you can prep it like that, push that, grab it. That's, that's that way. So you press it down like that and grab it this side. Okay, and then that way we can lay that piece of mortar. Like that. So it's like making a cut first and then taking that, what you've prepped. This mortar isn't so good. So yeah, that's one way how you can do it. Still on your neutral grip, you're just pushing it that way and taking it that way. So that's one way of taking it. Because you always want a nice uniformed piece of mortar on your, on your trowel so that you can lay it properly. And the reason why there's so many different colours of mortar is like the different grades of sand and different colours of sand and different cement, different strengths. That's why there's no two mixes look alike. And then you can add lime to it as well. So I don't do this to be fair. Cut it and roll. To be fair, the two, the two main ones that I use, uh, yeah, just prepping it like that. 
and then taking something like that or because I've built up my wrist strength which is something you're gonna to have to do yourself I can just go straight in and just turn it you know what I mean cut it cut it and take it cut it and take it cut it take it that's the, what I use the most and that, that's what most prickies do really I've got to give it one turn it's no good mauling about all the time but but it is important that when you're beginning that you've got a good trowel of mortar before you before you lay it on the brick just take a bit right and then put it and just keep turning your trowel okay that's another way you can do it until you get that cornish pasty look yeah so that's another way you can do it you take less mortar if you need you don't need to take a full trowel just practice taking little bits of mortar okay just to get the feeling because we're working with gravity and physics here <laughs> silly as it is but you are but if you get more confident then you're underneath it you turn it underneath it turn it you're not you're not slapping down like you think we do it we don't do that like that there's no there's no downward pressure with a mortar it's just basically we're just and it's in fast you know in fast motion there's no like there's no downward pressure at all. Just treating it and turning it. Also just cut and roll it. There you go. I'm not saying there's a right and wrong way. Everybody has their own way. But I'm just showing you the ways that I I do it and I prefer and I think it's easier. So yeah, basically it becomes automatic really as you ex get experience and you just end up, that's all you need to do. You know what I mean? As your wrist, and as you build up your wrist speed as well. So, so you can take a lot then, can't you? And then spread that. Right, now what we're gonna do next is learning to spread a bed. So let's just say we've got a trove of mortar we have here now what I want to do is obviously we're working from front to back but then we're twisting our trowel at the same time so in effect we've got a neutral grip but I, I have some I have my thumb on the uh, the knuckle of the handle there and basically we are just going back and twisting at the same time and you you want to be about what 20 mil from the face of the brick. Well, you should imagine this is the brick, but it's not, it's the board. This is gonna be our face, okay? So we wanna twist back, just like that. Two motions in one. And again, there's no downward pressure, it's just back. Okay, so, ready? There we go, all over the floor. <laughs> so we've got our mortar, and we're just gonna go back and twist. Okay, simple as that, there's no, it's like back and twist and you're coming up a little bit. I rose a little bit then, you saw that, so I came up a little bit. We're not, we're not going down. Okay, we're not splatting. Now once we've got that nice Cornish pasta, trowel full on our imaginary bricks, but board in this instance, I tend to just cut the right side, okay? But we're not just cutting. Basically, if you can picture a tobler on, I'll put one on the screen, that's what we want to treat our mortar and make it look like so that we can fur the bed we don't want to cut it like this all right basically we want a nice tubler on shape all the way through but we're cutting and catching we're working with gravity again here so this is quite difficult to get the hang of a lot of practice needed but we're basically cutting and scooping all right so you're like starting off with the toe this is the toe of the trowel this is the heel so you'll hear me say that a few times. So the toe and then the heel, okay? You're cutting like a knife. You're not just staying static and then you're actually cutting and moving forward. So you're moving down and forward. So like that. And then you always use this to go onto the next bit. And then, well, I can't get to the back, but same process at the back. And then that goes on there. So then we've got our, our tobler on shape. Once we've got our tobler on, 
I like to use terms like that because it'll help you with, with visualising the different stages. Now we're going to push the mortar out, we're going to throw it. There's a few different ways you can do this. I do it a different way to other people, but most of the brick is just hold it square like this and push down like that, which is, which is okay. But then you, you get an even spread of mortar going that way and that way, whereas we don't want that because we want most of the mortar to be, to be pushed over to the face because we always want to keep the cavity clean. So the way I do it is like that, as you would normal, but I angle it out about 45 degrees. So it's just the normal and about 45 degrees. The actual angle from like normal to there is about 30 or 35. And then it's 45. It's very difficult, honestly, to explain. And then it's the same thing. So you're just pushing down and coming back along the top line of the uh, Toblerone. Do you know what I mean? You'll have a straight line, so. And you can see that the majority comes over here and it doesn't go that way. But we're not cutting it to 45 degree. We, uh, we want it along the face side, so. Like so, like that. Because we want that in line with our face. All right, and if we need to treat that again, can do. There we've got our, our bed. And when we're furring as well, as you don't need to push down really hard, just like a gentle, you know what I mean? So that's the way we do our bed. All right, so create that tub we're on first. Nice and even, nice and uniform. All right, and we're pushing our, more, we've got our trowel, okay? Got it parallel, then we're at 45. And it's just keeping the furrow in the top line of the tobler on pushing down and then back and then we're scraping off and collecting okay scraping off and collecting we're not we're not keeping that same angle because it'll just fall on the floor like all that you want it in line with that face there's another way you can do it with with, with less furrowing but still furrowing a little bit from the side and using like a, a figure of eight motion so it's just a gentle furrow. Same thing, you're pushing everything that way, which is still good. But it's like you're coming from the side there. Uh, there's less of a furrow, but it's still a furrow. And that's it. We've got a nice bed of mortar there. So that when we put our brick down, right, then we can just cut it off. And we've got a nice full bed joint.